It's Brian Preston, the money guy. So the next stage, right? So after we come through the messy middle, we had all the opportunity and excitement in the 20s, and then we have the messy middle in the 30s. Now is a little bit of a shift, right? It's a little bit of a thing that happens once you cross into that 40-year-old threshold. Yeah, I think it's interesting. We are Just in kind of summary, you know, in the 20s, we were talking about how you could go rent a, a you know, essentially a hotel with a bunch of friends, and it didn't matter if you were just sleeping on the floor. Right. That doesn't bother you. You could also eat whatever you wanted to, and it just seemed to roll right off of you. You still could get into the swimsuit without being embarrassed about a, you know, things falling where they're not supposed to fall. <laughs> and then you get to your 40s. And look, this is what's great, because I think it was hilarious when we were doing the content meeting. All of you guys are under 40, so mm -hmm. you were scared to present this stuff. And I'm like, no, if you're doing it right, this stuff is not going to scare you. And it's supposed to scare you if you're doing, not focusing on what sure. you're supposed to. Because tip number one was focus on your health. I think in your 20s and 30s, we take so much for granted because it just naturally, you don't fall apart in your 20s and 30s. But your 40s, you can tell who is focusing on eating well, exercising, getting sleep, and really making an investment in their longevity. It's that whole Warren Buffett has a, a documentary on, I believe it's HBO, mm -hmm. where he talks about what if I could give you one car, and it's the only car you'll get. You'll get it, but you better treat it well, and how do you structure it? He's talking about your body. And I'm telling you guys, you do not want to take for granted your health because I had a friend who's a pastor, and he talked about, and I heard this when I was in my 30s, and I was so glad I heard it because I took it serious. He said, your 40s is a fork in the road moment because you will find that it's not going to be as easy to go run, you know, three miles mm -hmm. when you're in your 40s if you don't put effort into actually keeping your fitness up. And that's what, you know, what I've noticed, because I go get annual physicals, is there are things you need to be mindful of. I mean, we just came through this pandemic and you hear about comorbidities yep. and other things. This stuff really starts to take hold in your 40s. We even had Daniel, and this was the slide that everybody was like, <laughs> are we really going to show this? And I was like, yes, we need to show this so people will take it serious. The health risks that kind of exponentially go up after 40 is the heart disease, mm -hmm. the, the fatigue, the stress, back pains. This is why when somebody asks you to go move the piano, say no. The vitamin D deficiency. This is legit, guys. This is a supplement you can take. Anybody should over... Truthfully, anybody at any age, you ought to be starting to take vitamin D. Because we, as Americans, we just do not get enough sunlight. We don't get enough of that vitamin. You can do this. The cancers, the hearing loss, memory loss, kidney stones, stroke, obesity. obesity. And then this is Daniel's favorite because he got to remind me. Because I looked at this <laughs> list. I was like, the only thing I've had happen here is the vitamin D deficiency. You know, So I take uh -huh. a, a, a supplement. And Daniel goes, no, remember, your eyes have gone bad too. <laughs> so, I mean, these are all things that pop up post-40. But if you're deliberate and get serious, just like you focus on your financial life, focus on your well-being, your health, and you will be rewarded for that in the long term. And I think, Brian, would you agree with this? Just like figuring out compounding interest in your 20s, if you can figure this out in your early 40s or even before, it's going to make the road a lot easier when you do get into your late 40s or into your 50s or into your 60s. The work that you put in now will, no pun intended, pay dividends for you later on in life. Yeah, the, the, it's, it's this whole concept of biohacking. You know, a lot of people... I think we take for granted that, you know, the way we come out of our parent, you know, our mother is the way where we're going to be, we, you know, we'll die. That, that age was like, no, that was not set sure. in stone. You have a lot of control with that. That's the biggest thing that I've been a little frustrated with the pandemic that I think is universal knowledge. We ought to be encouraging everybody, go exercise, sure. go work on your cardiovascular health, because no matter where you fall into this broad spectrum of how we've processed this pandemic, because it's gotten very political, mm -hmm. everybody ought to try to want to be healthier by losing a few pounds, getting some exercise. Your health will have a direct impact on all this. I love it. All right, here's the number two, the second piece of advice that we tried to distill for those in the 40s that are in this stage of life, is that memories are more important than things. You said, Brian, that one of the things that achievers in their 30s do is they don't stop to realize, mm -hmm. oh, what are the sweet parts of right now? These things that seem hard, 
maybe aren't as hard or maybe I should focus on more. Well, I feel like in the 40s, folks feel like, okay, well now uh, I'm potentially in my peak earning years. I'm probably at the height of my career right now. I've got to strive to go do that next thing, to go have that next achievement, to go upgrade the house and have the fancier car and have the nicer thing and do this. And I feel like a lot of people get caught in that trap in their 40s. Yeah, it's it's the whole focus on fulfillment and why and what's actually going to bring you purpose in life. And I, I find that creating memories is so much more powerful than buying things because I don't care how nice, you know, I watch, I grew up in a car household where my, my brother and my father restored cars. And then when you see those auction shows that are on cable TV, and I'm always amazed when they show cars that we all coveted, but then you fast forward 20 years and you're like, yeah, that's a cool car, but I don't know if I want it. Just a car. I mean, because yep. it, it, things age, they rust, they get older. You will find that the stuff that fills your closet is not going to be as rewarding and fulfilling as you know taking your family on a great vacation or doing something that builds awesome memories. Because I've already shared earlier, memories will blossom. So even if you're in your 20s, I know we're talking about 40s now, but I know people are going to watch ahead. I don't care if you're doing things cheap. Do it in a bedazzled, basic way so that when you look back on it in the future, and this is the great thing about being in your 40s, you're very sentimental. If you've done it right, you will get that that happiness. I, I always call it glazed over, but it's really you just kind of you're daydreaming about how cool certain things were, and that's the power of memories blossoming. And I think what's so amazing about this is this does not have to actually be a financial thing. I mean, buying things is certainly a financial aspect. But the other day, I think I told you this, Brian, uh, it started raining, right? And we were uh, eating out on our back porch. And my wife was just like, hey, girls, you want to go run in the rain? I was like, no, don't do not do that because then we got wet clothes. <laughs> we got all this stuff. And she was like, folks, they're only this age once. How many times do they get to run around the rain? Just let them go run. And so she let our girls just go run around the backyard and just get poured on. And they were dripping wet. And it was like the most fun that they've had. And do you know how much money that cost me to let my kids run? A lot the, cheaper than a swimming pool. It was pool. a lot cheaper than a swimming pool. So I just think <laughs> I even at my stage of life, I'm trying to think through Okay, how am I fostering memories that my girls, 20 years from now, will look back and think, oh, yeah, that was a sweet, fun time, a thing that we did with mom and dad. Yeah, that's a great point. Number three is you're probably too far along to completely start over. Now, this one, I was like, wow, guys, I'm talking about throwing some cold water because this is like you're on this journey and then you realize, whoa, you're over the halfway point, can't turn back now. And I think really what this is getting at is the emotional side of when do you see middle life crises and other things happen? It really is pr mm -hmm. typically in your late 40s, early 50s, because I think people will figure out, hey, you know what? I'm mortal. And I'm also, I'm trying to second guess where am I at in my life? And it goes back, we talked about this in the 30s. Where, or 20s, where you don't compare your life to others. Because at the end of the day, what other people have or what other people are doing really is not how you should structure mm -hmm. your life. Success is actually looking at your yourself and saying, what can I wake up and do today that makes me better? And then also figuring out, how do I land this airplane into retirement with all the tools and resources that I currently have without trying to reinvent the wheel. Because we have now 20 to 30 years has rolled off of building a career and other things. Let's try to, let's try to hone this in to figure out how we actually turn this into a plan for success instead of just daydreaming. Yeah, I think the big thing that I see for clients in their 40s, that we're kind of helping them work through the shift, is it's really this conversation around risk, around yeah. appropriate risk. Now, in your 20s and 30s, yeah, it's okay to go do something crazy like, oh, I'm going to go start my own business or I'm going to get into an entrepreneurial endeavor. By the time you get into your 40s and you have the commitments and the mortgage and the car payments and the kids are older, it might be a lot harder to do that. The same is true inside of your investment and portfolio. While it may be okay to be 100% equities and have this crazy wild portfolio in your 20s and 30s because you know you have enough time to make it up, by the time you get into your 40s and you've actually built a nice base of assets, you may not want to do that reset again, that when we come through a year like 2008 and the market loses 50% intra-year, you may not want your portfolio to be on that same ride. So in your 40s, you have to have a real conversation with yourself about where really is not only my tolerance for risk at this stage, but where's my capacity for risk given the goals that I'm ultimately hoping to achieve? I think the key point you're talking about is it's not only becoming wealthy, it's maintaining and that's keeping right. wealth. Because that's not always the easiest thing. 
And I think that's a, a very important thing. I think a lot of us, especially if you're good at building wealth, you're good at creating a good income, that a lot of people will say, well, I'm just going to keep running this thing wide open to mm-hmm. maximize. And this is probably the age where maximizing might take second place to preservation and building and making sure that you've created a legacy or something that actually works in all markets, all economies, and no matter what comes your way. 